Hey guys, we're back and we are going to uh, get into a little bit of uh, the advanced morphs. Um, I talked a little bit earlier to these guys about this and uh, things got a little hairy, not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> so there's some contention, I think, about the patternless um, phantom recessive. Do you guys yeah. want to uh, kind of elaborate a little bit yeah. on that? Go well, ahead. we talk about uh, bicolors and you know, solid animals, and it's basically phantom. Phantom, you know, it takes the pattern out or it covers it or masks it. And, uh, you know, we call them other things because it's a visual human thing, but it's really just the phantom gene and all these a things. A pattern is a phantom? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Pattern and, is a phantom. And it's all weird right. because phantom's dark, right? It gives it a dark coat and it hides pattern. Yeah. But through our breeding practices, we've tried to make brighter colors and didn't realize what it was, and we've overcome it. I mean, so, through breeding, I tried myself to prove that patternless was actually a gene. And all I did was prove that it's phantom. I want other genes to be there, to be honest. Yeah. I, I really wanted there to be another gene. Yeah. And and to my dismay, it was actually phantom. So how'd you, how'd you like come to that? Like, what was the process? Well, for me and other breeders that I talked to, uh, Cabanetto, mm -hmm. we've worked out that for the most part, phantom, phantom behaves recessively. So it behaves okay. like a recessive trait. Gotcha. Meaning yeah. you can have two animals that are extremely highly patterned, almost pure white, mm -hmm. or even you can see it in lilies as well. Yeah. You bring them together and you sometimes tap out a phantom. And so that sometimes is a recessive mutation. Gotcha. So, okay. And same thing with yeah. lilies. When same you bring experience. them out, Boom, oh. you get a phantom lily. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I go more with the incomplete dominant, but yes. it acts like recessive. So we have this little contention between yeah, us. Yeah, 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 yeah. We discuss this all the time. All so, the time. Literally all the time. <laughs> you know, the vast majority of things are going to be incomplete dominant. This is I true. always start at that point. Okay. Yes. I, I'd agree I mean, with that. You're Actually, like 90% Tom does, percent plus. Tom's correct in that. So uh -huh. most things are incomplete dominant. Yeah, so I go with the KISS method, you keep it simple, stupid kind of a thing. Yes. So we start with what we know or what is the greatest portion and incomplete dominant is by far. Back. Now, if you want to know the difference between incomplete dominant and recessive, um, as far as how numbers work and who, how net tables work, there's a lot of calculators out there that will help you understand this information. But essentially, um, anytime anything is in a heterozygous form, het only means one thing. It means one thing only. That's not mean recessive. It means one thing, and that is we're, I, we're, we're comparing two different genetic traits that sit on the same loci. It's a fancy way of saying that sit on the same two pairs. So both genes are different. That's all that HET means. So when it comes to that with recessive and with incomplete dominant, it means that with recessive and it's a HET, you're not going to see it because it's being dominated by another trait. Right. So it's basically suppressing it. It's going to bring it up. Yeah. Non-visual is what we usually use in the community. Yeah. Right. So that's why sometimes head and recessive go hand in hand yeah. with the words non-visual. So when right. you try to say visual, we use that to make it simpler for people to understand without having to use the word recessive. Makes sense. Yeah. So a that's visual head. Me as a redhead, I am a... You are homozygous, homozygous exactly. recessive, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Red is a recessive my, trait. my kid came from my ex who is a brunette. That's why we can have a redheaded child, which we do. Yep. There you go. That's a good example. Okay. Your your child is a visual yep. recessive trait. Exactly. Or homozygous recessive. Homozygous recessive. And it's actually called the complete form. So there's nothing there to suppress it. Gotcha. Boom. Right yep. there. Yep. Right. All right. So makes sense. So since we're talking about this, we talk about advanced animals. Oh, right. advanced animals. Yes. So we're talking about these red animals with white spots, right? Mm -hmm. So the they're red, the red phantoms. Yep. So what's really cool is through our breeding practices, everybody's trying for this high white, high pattern. Mm -hmm. So now you're getting this more dominant effect because we've been stacking this, and now it's starting to come through. So with phantom sort of suppressing and muting your pattern, mm -hmm. but now your pattern is stronger and Top more of it. Yeah, so now we're starting to see it come through more. So realize that you're dealing with a phantom when you do this. Now, when you breed these together, some of them are coming out more brown or darker. Remember, mm -hmm. you can also stack the phantom in your phenotypes. With hypo. 
right to pull out that color yeah because we've been reading hypo in the reds to make them brighter right hypo so, so maybe we should explain it. phantom too so phantom what it's doing is it's not just muting the top coat coloration but it's adding melanin to it so this is where you get animals that are really really dark you have lines called the charcoal those animals are phantom they're very 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 dark animals so along with the patternless animals that are red colored you can get a phantom and red red coloration and that's where you get that color from right and it's the same thing with your og black line yeah oh, they're yeah. phantoms they are yep yep right? for sure so so it's not just one thing people say charcoal there's og blacks People have their own things. I, have I just call them black phantoms. Oh, right. I have my own line as yeah, well. Yeah. So. But that's essentially what it is. The base component that really makes them look like what they are is, is a phantom. So yeah. to Tom's, to what Tom's speaking about is advanced animals. Um, I found that tangerine actually coats top coat coloration and it enhances it. Okay. So having a gene that fights a phantom mm -hmm. is fighting that actual suppression of Top gotcha. coat coloration. Explain so top coat coloration a little bit more. Because uh, even I'm a little confused on that. So top coat coloration is interesting. So yeah. um, we've only found two genetic traits of it. Okay. One of them is orange pattern. Mm -hmm. One of them is white pattern. Gotcha. You'll see that in part two. OPWP is how we refer to it. And those are two of the three parts of your Harlequin. Because yes. there are three okay. traits that are always in Harlequin. And it's tiger and it's OP and WP. Okay. Mm -hmm. The tiger breaks it when you see the brakes in the harlequin the thing that's breaking it is the tiger so those are the most simplest forms then you can start adding pinstriping quad striping and pulling some of that tigering uh, out yeah. you can add phantom to a quick quad stripe pinstripe and then you get brindle if you get red brindles with red coloration that's where you start adding hypo Gotcha. How many genes are involved? Well, you're going to have to read part two for that. Right? <laughs> Next guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this was much more friendly. You guys were, were more well behaved during this uh, interaction earlier <laughs> today. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but that's great. It was a good explanation. I feel good about it. So Yeah, so that was something that's popular now are the reds with the white spot, we call it. But it's just the WP. And I think the, the Phantom being in there makes that white more crisp and you don't get the orange. It's, yeah, you're losing that orange because it's helping to pull that orange pattern out. Yeah, so while you get some of those phantoms with that like very muted coloration, mm -hmm. you can kind of see it in the dorsal and it's a more of like a brown color. Yeah, right. And so that's that. where you see a yeah. lot of that coloration. Okay. If you were to just turn the gene off or make it into a heterozygous form, mm -hmm. then suddenly that color would come back. And this is where you get phenotype ratios. So phenotype ratios is just like. You breed two animals together and you look at all the different animals that come out of it. Man, right. Yeah, and this is really important. Like the biggest part of this is the history of it because we know how we bred. Yes. And by bringing that white pattern, we know how it's interacting now that it's more advanced and we're seeing what it does so we can exploit it and learn from it. Yep. And try to do more with it. And it's with any of the traits. Uh, we talked about the orange pattern, white pattern. And so advanced animals is mm -hmm. in the same animal. So you can look at every trait we do or we've developed inadvertently or intentionally over the years and start using them with different levels of dominance of other traits yeah. to design our animals. And it'll give us an idea of what might pop up that we don't want. Yep, for sure. Right? Yep. Yeah. As soon as those pop, I mean, it's awesome because, you know, it's their designer morphs at this point. Yeah. Like, we're really honestly designing exactly how we want to do it. Exactly. Yeah. And in other videos, we've touched on hypo, right? Yep. So if I identify an animal using hypo and I can tell whether it has more black melanin or uh, brown melanin, if I find one that has more brown melanin and I'm breeding it into these black phantom lines, you can see some of them where you see more pattern through it, where it starts to come through and it's more brown, which is pretty much undesirable, you know, from a hobby standpoint, if, if that's your thing. If you want more of a, more of a classic black all the time. kind of color. So now you can start using a lot of these things being more advanced. So now we can identify an animal that has more black melanin and not the brown so much mm -hmm. and start using that with the phantoms and stacking the phantom on it yeah, and, and uh, really start developing yeah you know, a deeper black. Yeah, deeper right. black phantoms, hypo phantoms. I've done lavender phantoms myself. 
Um, we focused on that project years and years and years ago. Uh, proved it out, worked really well. Yeah, kind of the purplish amazing. colored animals and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So any base trait or anything we've come across, we can use it. We can stack it, we can play with it. Yep. And we have to understand what we've done with it in order to use it. Yep, I totally agree. Yeah, and so history is real important. Like I said before, with this information, kind of the sky's the limit. Anything can be done. Right. We just, we just need to continue to figure this out. Yeah, I think, think so. outside the box, take in this new information. If you don't have it, if you're new to the hobby, um, if you're if you've been around forever and just it hasn't popped in your head yet, think of ways you can use it and exploit it to make what you're trying to do in your own personal. You know, it might, might help you goals. cut down on a couple of generations actually. For, For sure. sure it will. Oh, like yeah. how many generations are we in? We're finally getting some of this stuff, yeah. and now we can make it work for us. So many less dead ends, right? Like, right. With this information. So, so, so if we're yeah. using this now, right. yeah. it took us so long to get here. Yeah. But now we can ramp up. It's the the ball python world. There was a time where we had these same problems or similar things where people were figuring yep. it out, and then all of a sudden it just it skyrockets once people start to understand this. Yep. And it's way better for the hobby, more things show up. Absolutely. All these designer animals, when we start spending years building animals intentionally to bring them back together, it, it's just gonna elevate the hobby. I think so. And I think it's no the doubt. future of the hobby because it'll also help us keep track of things so that we're not accidentally breeding animals like lily white to lily white to produce lethal morphs and some of the new extreme traits that are coming out that are a lot easier for people to identify mm -hmm. but then still difficult unless it's in the heterozygous form if it's incomplete dominant right. so it's really difficult to yeah. figure those ones out yeah and from a market standpoint we're going to spend years making these animals to make what we essentially want it drives the value up in the market. It makes our animals more valuable, more desirable, mm -hmm. and we can cater to, you know, different looks, yep. people's, Definitely. you know, desires and uh, Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Some amazing information. Thanks for joining me, you guys. Like, Absolutely. I've learned a lot. I hope you guys learned a lot, and uh, I hope you guys join us again for the next round coming soon. Yeah. Make sure you uh, check out the links and. That too. Read, read the guide. Read this. Don't forget down to read the guide. Check like this guy out. This guy out. Yep. yep. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Thanks for watching our videos. Make sure you uh, like and subscribe. And check out our latest videos. And don't forget to read the Foundation Genetics Guide.